So down the hill from my shack, look at that, it's the tent. And my buddy John is now actually living in it. He's joining the property and he's gonna be helping out a lot and I'm gonna be helping him. Welcome to the community. Down by John's tent is where I'm putting the new solar panels because down there is where it gets the most sun. I made an 800 watt solar array a few months ago, but it was still barely enough to keep just my fridge running. So I'm adding another 1200 watts of solar panels. First things first, I gotta construct a frame to hold all the panels. All right, so the structure is finished. Now I just gotta put the solar panels on. There we go, and that's what it's gonna look like. Panels are all 200 watts each, making 600 watts total. And so I'm gonna make another one of these solar arrays for the other three, and then we'll have 1200 watts. So over here is the battery housing that's gonna house all the electronics and the batteries down below. I made this whole thing off camera just because it wasn't very interesting to build. It's pretty simple. Upper compartments for the electronics, lower one is for the batteries, the lower compartments insulated, to keep the batteries nice and warm. I'm putting this up on some cinder blocks. I also made sure to put the ledges uh, outside of the edge of the cinder blocks, if you see what I mean. So hopefully no rats or mice will be climbing up and trying to get into my battery box. That would be very bad if they made a nest in there or chewed my wires. Here is my, I believe this is four gauge wire. I got some different sized wires here. This is four gauge, this is eight gauge. I'm really trying to make the most out of my solar panels, so I put them in the absolutely best spot I could get on the property. One drawback of that is that it's over 700 feet away from my shack, so I need to dig a power line to bring the power from the solar panels to me. And that was hard work. I just dug it with a pickaxe, was slow going, but I did it in about two days. I'm using 12 gauge wire for my power line. Most places I saw would suggest 10 gauge because it has less current drop, but 10 gauge was more expensive. I'm really trying to save money. I'm broke as hell. I live in a shack for God's sake. I don't got a million dollars to spend here. And this four foot two by four goes on the bottom. And that's gonna be the foot. So you can see here what I'm doing to make sure that these stands for the solar panels are level. I'm digging into the ground a little bit to make it level, and then I put cinder blocks on to raise the wood up off the ground so it doesn't rot. And then just slap these on, and then I'm going to put sandbags on top of these to hold it down. Oh no! Oh my god! Come in the middle. I think that'd be better. All right. You can let go now. Problem. How does it go? <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, I attached it to the wrong piece. It's supposed to be in the bottom part, mm. the bottom face. You can pull this out for me, just like that. To get the absolute maximum out of my solar panels, it was really important to me to get an adjustable solar panel array. So using this setup, I can change the angle throughout the year to get the maximum sunlight all year round. Yep. Well, you don't 
really it's not need too... to cut these. Yeah, that's not too high. Well, I shouldn't cut them at all. It's a little wobbly, but I can add a cross brace across it. It won't be a big deal. There's a little bit of a wobble to it. I'm going to fix that by adding a support piece on the back diagonally. That should give it enough bracing to not wobble anymore. So here's the finished array. I didn't bother filming all the wiring just because it's not very entertaining to watch. I started working on these late fall and I didn't finish them until early spring. I was having money problems. I'd always have to wait for stuff in the mail. I'd find something out and I'd have to learn something new that I didn't know before. Um, so there was just a lot of delays and then also building it, designing the whole thing. It took a while. It took longer than I expected. I also moved my first solar array down here next to it and tied it in. So this is now a two kilowatt solar array. Also, you may be wondering why I put these so high up off the ground and have all the space underneath. That's because these are bifacial solar panels. So they let in light from the front and the back. So by having them up off the ground like that, you're allowing a lot of light to shine underneath and then bounce back up, especially in the winter when there's snow. So that's why they're like that. Looking at the panels from the back, it's not the prettiest wiring job, uh, but it works. Uh, I am going to tidy up all these later on. The charge controllers are also still partially exposed. Those are going to get covered. I'm also experimenting with some medium price charge controllers and these really cheap, like $10 ones. So far, these cheap ones have actually been working great. No complaints, really. And over here is the battery box. Next to the battery box, I have a small generator. This is my backup generator. I only ever use this if the batteries die. And the roof lifts up to access all the wiring and such. It looks like kind of a mess right now because I got these chargers hooked into it. All right, so here's the actual wiring. These big fat cables go down to the batteries in the lower compartment. This switch turns off the whole system, disconnects everything from the batteries themselves. These are my bus bars. So all positive connections go to that one, all negative go to that one. So everything is tied into the bus bars. Over here is a 12 volt power supply. If I ever need to add fans in here or anything, uh, this will power those. This also heats some heating mats that go underneath my batteries. I have three of these because it was cheaper to get three smaller chargers that only give 10 amps each than to buy one 30 amp charger to charge this whole thing off my generator. So when I start the generator, I gotta start charging on all three of these. It's a little fussy, but it saved me a lot of money. And then in the lower compartment, I got the batteries very well insulated. Over on the left, I have some space in case I ever wanna add more. Right now, it's just filled with some extra scraps. Um, I did design this so that it'd have enough space to have four batteries if I wanted to. Right now, I only have two. So that's what that extra space over there is for. These are 24 volt, 230 amp hours each. So this is a 24 volt system. So I got the inverter inside of the battery compartment. Um, my logic behind that is that I'm hoping in the winter time, the heat produced by this helps keep the batteries warm. Because these are lithium iron phosphate batteries, if you try and charge them below freezing temperatures, you'll ruin them. Those are actually normally used for septic tanks inside of RVs, but they work great for this application. Before I can close this lower door, I gotta stuff this all back up. sealed up tight in there and can close the door now. This big brick right here, this is a 120 volt to 240 volt transformer. So that bumps up the voltage for the power line that carries the power from here all the way up to the trees there, around the tree line and up to my shack. If I tried just running 110 volts from here up to the shack, uh, because of voltage drop, by the time it got there, I'd lose like 20% of the voltage. And by using a transformer, I only lose like 4% voltage. If I got a couple of cloudy days, the 800 watts still just wasn't enough. But now that I have two kilowatts, I've had no problems. If anything, I've been generating too much power and the battery bank gets too full and I actually need to come out here and disconnect the solar panels. I could really use some kind of dump load so that when the battery bank is like at its maximum capacity, I need something to suck up a ton of electricity to burn off all that excess. But all the components for that kind of stuff cost like hundreds of dollars for some reason, as far as I've seen online. So right now I'm trying to think of a cheaper way to do that. Overall, this whole system has been working great. I've been very happy with it. So I think the next thing I'm gonna work on is a shower. Sometimes I shower when I visit my family. Sometimes I shower when I'm at a friend's house, um, but it's not very often. So I'd really like a shower. Do drugs, drive fast, leave the matrix.